Good morning, church. It's so good to be with you all, even though it's in a kind of a really strange way. We really miss you, so miss being able to talk to everybody face to face and hug and just share life a bit better. And I know that we're all feeling the same way. But you know, today we want to have the chance just, or we have got the chance to meet with God together. And I know it's unusual. I don't know if you're in your lounge or your bedroom or wherever you're watching this stream, but I want to encourage you that as we worship God together today to sing like no one's listening, even to dance like nobody's watching. If you're there with your family, lead each other to worship God today. I want to encourage you, maybe Alex, you've got your guitar there. Perhaps Rich, get the cajon out. Somebody else who's got an instrument. Um, join in, make music in your home. Let's worship God together today. Let's um, allow his spirit to well up joy in us despite our circumstances right now, despite our physical separation. We just really believe that the spirit of God today will connect us all wherever we are. I want to encourage you if you've got a, signed in for a Twitch account to make some comments at the side of the stream so that um, we can interact with one another. Comment if you've got a, a Bible verse that you really uh, want to share today or, or, or a word and, and everybody can be reading that and uh, understanding um, how, how we're connected today. So we're going to start by worshipping God with some music. We're going to sing Waymaker. We're going to sing it in the key of D. So if you have your guitar and you want to join in, uh, you can join in. Bless you guys. Let's worship God together today. Yeah, Holy Spirit, we invite you to come be with us in our worship. As we bring praises before the throne of Almighty God.
give up on us, God. You are always for us and you are not against us. You are the one who makes a way where there is no way. You are the one who always keeps his promises. You are the God who is light in the darkness. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Anyone who believes in me will not walk in darkness, but they will have light. They will have the light of life. So God, we thank you that you have light and you give us light, even though right now things are really hard. God, we trust you. We just uh, want to just commit uh, this next half hour or so, Lord, for it to be a holy place. Lord, I, I read this morning when uh, Moses encountered the burning bush, the angel of the Lord, visibly present, God spoke and said, take off your shoes because it's holy ground. Look, take off what you normally wander around thinking what you normally live in, your normal expectations, your normal opinion of yourself. Take it off. And so Lord, we just want to create a holy place right now, wherever we are. And Lord, I just pray you would come, Holy Spirit, to every home represented today by this stream just want to speak your presence and your peace, Lord, your nearness. We speak faith and hope, Lord, into every heart. Lord, I just pray you would come and you would just wash our minds today. Lord, we are immersed in all the challenges and problems. Lord, our hearts break, as I know yours does, of the many lives that are being lost at this time, of the tragedy, of the suffering, Lord. But Lord, wash us, that Lord, we might have faith today. really interesting when you look at um, church sort of worship songs and which are popular at different seasons and you could be a bit cynical and just say well that's because of who's written it or because it's got a good melody but I believe in the end God is about his business and if we look over the last probably year the or maybe a little bit longer than that I suppose like 18 months the two biggest songs have been Reckless Love and have been Waymaker. And I don't believe that's by accident. I don't believe because they've just nice songs or we enjoy listening to them, there's something that God's been speaking to us through those songs, I believe. Reckless Love is about his love for you. It is about him coming after you about God finding us and being found to then join in the going after others. Waymaker is the trust and belief that even when we don't see it, we believe God's work and that he can always make a way wherever the obstacles and we find ourselves in this place. God hasn't been caught out by the coronavirus. 
isn't scratching his head today wondering what the heck to do about it all. Uh, he's not putting some special focus group of angels together to try and sort the situation and bring resolve. He is always at work. He is at work today. He is at work right now. And that's what I just want to speak into this morning. That God is at work. He is at work in your life. I love good questions. What if this is the most important moment in your entire life? What if the choices you make in this season are the most important choices you ever make? What if the truth you believe to hold on to is the most important truth you'll ever know? What if the focus of your emotions and your mind and your thoughts is to be put into the most important things? could ever do what if this is the most important moment in your life interesting thought isn't it it's good to think about those things uh, it's great to be with you today um, I've uh, I've got my coffee Laura just so I don't feel left out uh, and we miss you guys we miss being together uh, when, when and if we get to the end of this, we're going to have a great time getting together, aren't we? Uh, we have to put a lot more chairs out, Jim. I think. Looking forward to gathering. Like I said, just get some coffee. I want to just try and speak into what God is doing, uh, because we can easily look around and see what's happening. We can see what the enemy's doing. And uh, in John 10:10, 10, 10, Jesus said, the thief, the enemy, Satan, comes to steal, kill and destroy. When we look around the world, that's what we're seeing at this time, isn't it? Livelihoods being destroyed, lives themselves being destroyed, uh, healthcare systems being destroyed, uh, financial stability being torn down. But what's, what's so important is what Jesus says next. But I've come to bring life. So God wants to bring life to you today. I just want to read something. You may have come across this. I was in the uh, chemist yesterday. Um, there was only four people in the queue, so I thought I'd join in and be all right. It still took me about half an hour. Uh, but it's good to learn patience, isn't it? Isn't it a wonderful opportunity to learn patience at the moment? We've talked about that before, haven't we? Patience. Patience is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. If you have patience, if we can just get patience in this season, you will always beat the enemy. You will always outlast him. He can't have patience because it's a fruit of the Holy Spirit. It doesn't come from anywhere else. So it's really good to learn a way, isn't it? It's good when the normal things of life that we take for granted suddenly become a challenge. Great opportunity to learn patience. But I just want to read this. This is written by an Italian doctor. And as we see in Italy, and we potentially fear for ourselves the horrors that have been going on. But this is what he has written recently. Even in my worst nightmares, I would never have expected. Excuse me. Sorry. Even in my worst nightmares, I would never have expected to see and live the events that have occurred in our hospital over the last few weeks. This horror is increasing every day. It's become unmanageable, and we have become ineffective. At first, only a few people came. Then it was hundreds, and now we are no longer doctors, but selectors. We have to decide who will live and who will die by sending them home, even though these people have duly paid their taxes in Italy. Two weeks ago, my colleagues and I were atheists. Belief in science was the norm, and science eliminates God's presence. 
I would always laugh at my parents for going to church. Nine days ago, a 75-year-old pastor came to us with severe respiratory problems. He had a Bible and would read passages every day to those who were dying and hold their hands. We were both mentally and physically exhausted and bitter, but when we had the time, we would sit down and we would listen to this pastor. We have to admit that as humans, we had reached our limits. We can't do any more. More and more people are dying every day. We're exhausted. Two of our colleagues have died and others are barely standing. We realise that mankind's scientific knowledge is limited and that we need God. We started to pray whenever we had a few minutes. It's incredible that even as committed atheists, we came to God and found peace. He helps us persevere so we can care for the patients. Yesterday, this 75-year-old shepherd passed away. We were devastated as never before, having seen 120 deaths over the last few weeks. But because this old shepherd, whilst he was with us, managed to bring back peace to us, a peace I had no hope of ever finding. The shepherd has gone to be with the Lord, and we will follow soon. I have not gone home for six days. I can't remember when I last ate, and I've realised now how useless I've been to people on this earth until now. I want to help others until my last breath. I'm glad to have found Jesus, and I want to serve him by helping my fellow men until my final breath. Before we moved to Highworth, uh, we were privileged to go and spend some time in Mozambique. And about a week before we arrived, uh, we arrived at the end of September 2011, uh, one of the pastors there, uh, Iris Global, um, had been driving through a village in, in his uh, four-wheel drive and a child had run out, in the road, out onto the road in front of him and unfortunately been knocked down and the child passed away. And uh, because of tribal law still being very much in evident, evidence in, in northern Mozambique, uh, the procedure is for the police to straight away arrest someone, put them in jail, then for the courts to look at that speedily, what has happened, and decide whether there's ever any action that needs to be taken. And this stops people taking the law into their own hands. So here's a child of God. Here, here's a follower of Christ. Something horrendous has happened. It was a complete accident. It wasn't his fault. Uh, and yet, if that was me sat in a jail cell having had that happen I know what my questions would be why 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 God why didn't you stop this and what have I done wrong and I'll be immersed in all those things the thief who comes to steal kill and destroy would dominate my thoughts but this pastor and he shared uh, it was about then two weeks after we got there that he shared in church and um, he told us what had happened because we'd heard the story when we got there and we were all praying for him and for the whole situation because it's devastating. And this pastor, he was put into a prison cell on his own. And the police knew Iris Global. Uh, they have a big base in Pember in northern Mozambique. And they knew the good work that they did. And they, I think they talked to some witnesses. They knew it wasn't this guy's fault but they knew they had to go through the system, so they put him in this jail cell on his own. But this guy, this child of God, said to the prison guards, I don't want to be in here on my own. I want to be in that cell. And he pointed down towards the end of the corridor. And the end of the corridor was a, a large cell, and there was maybe 30, maybe 35, 40 uh, inmates in there. And the uh, prison guard said, no, we can't do that. We're not going to put you in there. They are the worst of the worst. 
They're people who've been arrested and they're in there awaiting trial and they're murderers, they're thieves, they're rapists, they are the worst of the worst. We're not going to put you in there. And he said, he begged them, no, that's where I want to be. Put me in with those people. And they said, no, we can't put you in there. They're going to beat you up. They're, you know, they're going to threaten your life. And he said, look, well, put me in there. And if that happens, you can pull me out. So they put him into that cell. And he was in that cell, I think, for two, two and a half weeks before then he was released, found to not be guilty, and, and came and spoke at our church. And... and while he was in that cell, he led 40 guys to Jesus. 40 of the worst of the worst. He led to Jesus. You see, he wasn't focused on the thief stealing, killing, destroying. I know his heart broke for that child. But he instead was focused on the Christ who has come to bring life. Lord, what are you doing? So what is God doing right now in your life? Are you focused on all the stuff that's gone? Are you, like so many I have met this week, who said to me, I can't wait for it to get back to normal? Are you in that place? Are you merely looking forward to that? Are you just trying to survive? Are you just trying to juggle everything? Or... 10 things aren't going on? Are you structuring your life uh, to the nth degree so that somehow we don't have to sit in the mess? What is God doing in your life? What is Christ about? Where is the life that he wants to bring? Where's that? I just want to read something. Uh, it's from... Luke's account of Christ's life. Uh, you can find it in the New Testament. And I want to read from chapter 4. And it's about Christ's uh, season in the wilderness. He's just had his baptism. Nobody's known about him. He's lived 30 years and just been obedient to God and learned uh, and grown in his relationship with his father through faith. And there is baptism, there's a stunning occurrence where Father speaks from heaven, the Spirit descends in bodily form and rests on the Son. But then it gets really strange. So I'll just read from four, chapter 4, verse 1. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during these days, and at the end of them he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell this stone to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone. The devil led him up to a high place, and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, I will give you all their authority and splendor. It has been given to me and I can give it to anyone. I, I want to. If you worship me, it will be yours. Jesus answered, it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. The devil led him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you're the son of God, he said, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. They will lift you up in their hands so you will not strike your foot against the stone. Jesus answered, it is said, do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished all this tempting, he left him until an opportune time. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news about him spread through the whole countryside. So this is what's going on. Uh, Jesus uh, went to the Jordan, 
and was baptized and, his, and the Holy Spirit comes upon him. It says at the beginning of chapter 4, Jesus is full of the Holy Spirit. And yet something happens between verse 1 and then in verse 14. It says Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit and news about him spread throughout the whole region. Something's gone on there. Something has happened in that time, in that 40 days that has brought him from a fullness of the Spirit to the power of the Spirit. Doesn't that sound like the Western church today? That in a sense we have this fullness of, of the Spirit, we have gifts of the Holy Spirit, there are, there are prophecies and words of knowledge that probably more so than uh, church has ever been, maybe even more so than church and acts. Uh, we understand the gifts of the Holy Spirit. People are aware that I can hear God and God can speak to me. We have great times of worship individually or together. We've had sense of visitation at times and God's presence, but we lack the power, don't we? Because we want to see people saved. I don't want things to go back to normal. I don't want to have coronavirus, but I don't want things to go back to normal, more normal, where we just prolong people's lives for a bit and I just get absorbed in all my stuff and all those people die without Christ anyway. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. The news about Jesus would spread through every street, every cul-de-sac, every high street, every town, every village, every city in our nation. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. So what if this season of wilderness, this season of temptation is about moving you from a place of a fullness in the Holy Spirit to a place of power in the Holy Spirit? What if when this season is over, the church emerges as the bride of Christ. What if we emerge as Jesus, the body of Christ to our world? What if we have in this time done business with God? What if we have uh, discovered our true identity as being loved? That simple thing, we talked about it last week, I think, seems like age ago. The simple challenge that God loves me. What if we really knew that? What if we emerged free? What if we emerged unfocused uh, on comfort? What if actually we emerged and didn't care about time? And we could gather and we could worship for hours. We could preach and teach for hours. We could minister for hours. What if we became the church the people, the elect, the called out ones, the ones that represent God, the ones that heaven wants to point to and say, hey world, look at them and you'll see us. What if this is this season? So Jesus was hungry. He was in the wilderness. He was alone. I know many of you are alone at the moment. I know for many of you this is really tough, especially if you've got younger children, especially if you're a single parent. This is a tough, tough time. Some of us, we're used to having all our plans and we're used to having a sense of control over life and it's not there, it never really was. We just pretended it was. And all that's up in the air, isn't it? And I believe God wants to deal with your heart. And at this time, there is temptation that goes on. The, the enemy is whispering to you like he did in the garden. <clears throat> did God really say? Jesus himself there, what was the big temptation there? The big temptation was, if you are the son of God, if you are sat at home today, a child of the king, if you are, your identity is going to be challenged. You're going to be tempted to give in to lies, old lies, 
to just get through. But God wants to process your heart this time. God wants to meet with you. And some of it's going to be really hard, guys. Some of it's going to be really tough because we're going to face into ourselves. My, uh, some of my heroes are the guys at Gloucester House. I can see Gloucester House just across uh, the Market Square. And those guys uh, embrace something called the 12 Steps. Uh, it's created by a Christian. It's really the process of salvation. And they allow their hearts to be open. They are laid bare during those 12 steps, those 12 weeks, like few others. Really looking at the real them. Are you prepared to look at the real you? Because it's going to come up over this time because suddenly all the stuff's not there and we can't fill in and we're freaking out. I read a post this week, a friend of mine, um, she lives in another place, Christian, but she just talked about being in uh, Sainsbury's and just breaking down in the toilet roll aisle because there are no toilet rolls. It's amazing how easily we have been so comfortable and you take just toilet rolls away and we lose the plot. But God wants to work at your heart this time. He wants to bring faith out of you. The most important thing, the most valuable thing you possess today, if you know Christ, is faith. It's not your family. It's not your mortgage. It is not uh, your experience or the educational accomplishments you have. It's not your career. It is faith. And that's what 1 Peter talks about. Your faith of more worth than pure God. Your faith is being tested in this time. It's going to be tested. And will you do business with God? Will you let him lay your heart bare? Will you face into your fears? Will you face the reality as that doctor has said that we can't do anything, that we can't hold it together, that we can't change anybody, that we can't even find toilet roll at times? The Holy Spirit is at work in you. He is there. He's been there for a whole life. But right now, as the veil has been torn to our little comfortable Western experience. And let's remember that. I was watching some of the news last night talking about a township in South Africa and how they're not, where they've been told they've got to isolate they're not doing it, and yet how do six of you who live in a one-bedroom shack, or a, sorry, a one-room shack, how do you isolate? We're privileged. And yet this time, will you let Holy Spirit touch your life? He's wanting to bring you to a place where you know that you are loved with an everlasting love where you are free from the old you, where your identity, and that's something we've talked about, we've talked about, we've talked about in church of late, isn't it? Your identity is not something you create. You don't make it up. You're next, not an extrovert or an introvert. Those don't define you. You're a child of God. And you are called by Christ. And it's whatever he says about you that goes. It's whatever he wants to speak that you obey and you embrace. That's what Jesus did in the wilderness. He, he was tempted to manipulate God for his own comfort, for his own ends, to fulfill his call by shortcutting it. But every time he chose obedience <clears throat> and he chose the will of God. God is wanting to work in you. What if this is the most important season in your life? 
can I encourage you? Find a bit of space and a bit of time. Don't just fill your life up. Don't just try and keep busy. And ask Holy Spirit to come and do what he does. That picture in 1 Peter of gold uh, is that gold is heated up and the, the, the dross, the imperfections rise to the top. You may have seen a picture, maybe look one up on Google, of huge vats of gold and lots at the top of these darker bits and there in the impurities. And we're in that season when we've been heated up. <clears throat> you've probably found yourself that maybe you're not as patient as you thought. Maybe you're not as kind as you thought. I found myself being in a shop and actually seeing some pasta, thinking, ah, I want to grab it all. And actually, can I just take one? All that stuff comes up in us. You may be looking to old fears, but I want to tell you that God is working and he doesn't allow those things just to come up just so we go, oh, wow, gosh, how awful am I? How terrible. I thought I was okay, but the pressure's gone up and I'm not. The, the point is, as the temperature goes up, as those imperfections rise to the top, that then they're taken away, they're scooped off. And that's what God wants to do. The power of the Holy Spirit wants to take those things and break those things off of your life. All the footholds the enemy has had, all the lies he's been speaking to you for years, the pain you have from childhood, the mistakes you've made that you've never forgiven yourself for. Holy Spirit wants to come and heal. Jesus. Jesus. So will you open your heart? We're going to have communion. Hopefully uh, you've got uh, some there. What I'll do, I'll wait a minute just so you can maybe grab a bit of bread. We haven't got any bread at the moment, so um, salted crackers today. Uh, but if you can just get a bit of bread or a cracker or a biscuit and a glass of something. Uh, in a minute, we are going to take communion. Communion is an invitation in to Christ. This, this time, uh, hear me, I'm not saying that God thought, do you know what, the best way I'm going to change Matt is by causing this virus to spread throughout the world. No, it's not that. That's the enemy stuff. He comes to steal, kill and destroy. But Jesus has come to bring life. And you imagine what was going on for Joseph in prison all those years. Read the story in Genesis. Stunning. We don't read anything of what was going on in his heart, but something incredible happened in this guy's heart. Whilst he was isolated, whilst he was on his own, whilst he had no future, whilst hope was seemingly lost, it's the same for us, isn't it? So we're going to share in this little meal. God's very body broken for us. His blood shed for us. The invitation into power. The power to set us free. And as we take it today... May our hearts cry, being we want to know Christ. We want to live in Him. We want to let His life change our lives. His blood uh, was shed for the forgiveness of sins. I don't know if you really know what forgiveness means. You see, it's not getting let off the hook. It's not merely God the Father no longer counting it against us. We're no longer finding the penalty for our failure. Forgiveness means it's like it never happened. Forgiveness means that you are made new in Christ, that you are born afresh, that there is power in his blood. And as you drink today, as we 
proclaim his death and his resurrection, that life, to come into you today and into your children. Forgiveness, washed clean. I no longer walk in the penalty, but I no longer walk in, in, in the, the mess or the hangover of my life. I'm free. So Lord, we just thank you for your shed blood today. We don't deserve it. So all we can do is receive it. And I just pray that the power of the blood would break every demonic stronghold, every lie, everything the man has done to us. Forgive us, Lord, we pray. Amazing, isn't it? Today, John 6, Jesus says, um, my flesh is real food. Um, he was not inviting us to cannibalism. He was speaking about something extraordinary and so supernatural and so profound that today as we take this act of taking bread or a cracker the body representing the body of God himself it's real food and I pray as you do this today the supernatural energy will enter into you that you will get inspired about this season not not in some sort of uh, hectic heroic uh, endeavour but the God is going to work in me that it doesn't matter what's going on around me he will feed me he will keep me he will sustain me and so Jesus we thank you for your body broken for us today and I pray for every one of my brothers and my sisters that you would energise us supernaturally to fight this fight to not give in to temptation, though we are weak. To know, I think it's Mark's gospel, it talks about angels coming and ministering to Christ in the wilderness. May that be so, Lord. going to worship, I'm just going to sing one song and uh, we'll bring it to a close. I hope what I've said is of God and um, just as we sing, we're singing a, a new song, you may have um, <coughs> been able to listen to the link we sent around yesterday. Um, But I want you, hopefully, to walk away today from our time together. To have a thought in your mind and a seed sown in your heart that this is a blessed time. That we are blessed in this time. We're not blessed with the pain. That's not the blessing, the heartache of our world. It's not about that but that his favour and his blessing wants to rest on us like never before, for we are to be blessed to be a blessing. And so as we seek our world to know Christ, God starts with us and he blesses and favours us. 
you're chosen. He's leaning in towards you today. Yeah, Jesus, we are not gathering today via the internet for a bless me up or to make ourselves feel a bit better. Lord, we are here crying out that your favour would rest on us, that through us, Lord, your favour and my rest on our nation. So, Father, we do pray together for our nation today. And, Father, I want to pray for all those that are dying today, that, Lord, they would not die without Christ, without you. That whether we live for 10 years or 100, what good is it if we do not know the creator of all things? And Father, would you release eternal life, we pray, and have mercy. Lord, we pray for all the many doctors and nurses and those working on the front lines. And Lord, we pray that in the horror, Lord, in the heartache and the brokenness, that you would come through, Lord. That you would be kind, that you'd have mercy. The Lord, you make yourself known, we pray, in Jesus' name. And God, we cry out, Lord, to you for our nation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. To those living on the streets, to our Prime Minister, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You love all of them, Lord. And so we choose to love all of them. We choose to put down our opinions and our critiques of others and instead we choose love we will draw to a close in a second Ethan's just going to come and share something in a minute uh, but just a couple quick bits of information uh, hopefully uh, you have come across uh, Hope for Highworth it's a new YouTube channel we've launched. This is for people who do not know Christ. Please do not watch it and go, oh, that was nice. The point is what we're trying to discover at this time, more than any other time, which is how do we share the good news? Go into all the world. That was to every one of us. And most of us, Maybe 99% of us will stick our hands up and say we're not very good at this. So this time, trying to make it not easy, I guess, but give you a way of doing it. So videos will be on that channel. Um, I've specifically created them. I've spoken to Highworth because that's where I live, but they're relevant to anyone who doesn't know Christ. You're part of this. And the time that myself and Caleb put in is worthless. If you don't, copy the link and email it to someone. If you don't share it on social media, it's been a bit of a waste of time. And we're going to hopefully be putting other videos up there. Because I want, I want to see, because I know the heart of God longs to see hundreds and thousands of former atheists coming to know that they're loved and finding life and freedom in Jesus. Hopefully you got um, contact uh, uh, on Friday. Um, this is a paper copy, you've got an electronic one. Uh, this uh, we're gonna put out every Friday until the end of the crisis. And this is your chance. So please bombard Rachel Smith uh, with articles, thoughts, reflections, prayers, because uh, it's about coming from the body, coming from the family. So please send them to her and put that on. And finally, uh, we've got a new book. Yeah, I'd already ordered this uh, before this whole thing happened. It's only just come out. Uh, we intend to have Gavin Calver come and speak to the church in Highworth, actually more importantly, speak to the community in Highworth on the 12th of July, have no idea if it's going to happen or not, and don't really care, to be honest, because I know God will have plans and purpose. He won't let people not hear about his death and resurrection. But um, Gavin's fantastic. The book's called Unleashed. I think it's uh, very prophetic. It's about the Acts Church today, seeing the church like it was in the Bible, but it's how do we live that today. I've read the first couple chapters, it's really good. I've got 22 copies of Unleashed. Um, they're a tenner, um, but if you can't afford that or don't want to pay, that's okay, um, because we're here to be a blessing. 
So if you would like one of these, uh, if you can just drop me a text or an email, I will either post it to you or post it for your letterbox. I'll make sure I wash my hands and do all the correct things before that. But I've got those. So if you'd like Gavin Calvert's book, Unleashed, that's our book we're reading uh, in this season. £10, but don't, don't worry about that. You can email, the, um, send the details, bank details or whatever in. But that's for you. Ethan's going to finish it off. And then you can go and uh, stay at home. Um, in, in the chat, uh, someone put the Psalm, Psalm 121. And as I was reading it, I came across the line, the Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. And that challenged me because very clearly that um, many people have not been kept from all harm in the world. And I just felt, uh, I asked God what he meant by this line. And I really got a sense that uh, he was talking about our heart and that he will keep our heart from all, of, all stress and all worry, that he will keep our hearts in, in shape and in love and in grace. And I just wanted to bless you with that. So, God, I just pray that you would keep our hearts from panic, from worry, from the stress the world seems so desperate to put upon us. Amen. 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 So, uh, that's it for our second uh, live stream Sunday morning. We'll be with you again live on Wednesday. There'll be a video every day on the Highworth Community Church YouTube site. Please look at the Hope for Highworth stuff. Uh, and also, we will be at some point, we're going to see if we can stream to YouTube instead of Twitch, just because a few people are having a bit of trouble with it. And I'm aware you'd then be able to watch us on your smart TV. Uh, so, we all just want to say goodbye to you all. Someone? Uh, and um, just say uh, thanks to family. Summer's been running the words and all that stuff. And um, and big thanks to Caleb especially again because he's been putting together all the videos, which is amazing. But we love you guys and have a great day. Bye. Enjoy the sun. Be blessed.